Welcome to the Chairman's Perspective Podcast. Welcome to the Chairman's Perspective. I'm your guest host, Commissioner Amber Mills, representing District 1 on the Shelby County Board of Commissioners. And my hope is that the Chairman's Perspective really gives you, our listener, a pretty good idea about the work your Shelby County government is committed to on a daily basis. And with that, on today's show, we have Mr. John Butler, President of AgriCenter International. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Chairman's Perspective here on the Kazookian Network. The Kazookian Network presents Cities Now with Carol Coletta. I'm Carol Coletta, host of Cities Now, a brand new show hosted here on the Kazookian Network. With Cities Now, we want to help listeners make smart decisions for their cities. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Little by little, the city is rebuilding itself with businesses such as urban farms and breweries. We'll interview the sharpest people on the thorniest issues facing Cities Now. Cities Now, part of the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! And we're back. Let's get right into the show. Welcome, Mr. John Butler, to the Chairman's Perspective. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself before we get started into the work of the AgriCenter International. You bet. First of all, I'd like to say thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, If I had to describe myself, I'm a fifth-generation farmer, grew up right down the road in Dyer County, and uh, ran that business for about 25 years. And the, 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 the short of the story is, uh, I raised two sons that wanted to come back to the farm, and I couldn't figure out a way to bring them in and me stay, so I fired myself, uh, which is easier to do than you think. <laughs> so uh, I, I started looking for a job and uh, knew my predecessor here at Agri Center, John Charles Wilson, who was right here from Shelby County and was at the Agri Center for about 20 years and uh, just uh, fell in love with the campus about four and a half years ago, took the first tour, and uh, just knew that this was the the place that I need to come to to try to uh, continue the efforts uh, that I've spent my entire career promoting agriculture. Okay, good. And AgriCenter International, tell us exactly what is AgriCenter and its mission. Yeah, so AgriCenter is a really interesting, uh, I think, experiment. Uh, it started 40 years ago. So in 1979, uh, the mayor at the time was Mayor, mayor Bear Morris, and he met with the county commission. The chairman at the time was Charlie Perkins. And they wanted to do something different in Shelby County, and they want they had this land sitting out there at Shelby Farms, and uh, the idea was to create a, a a lifelong tribute to the agriculture industry, and to have that sitting on a farm that was an active farm that where research and education and adults and youth could all understand uh, how important the industry was to their daily lives. Now, I think what's happened in the last 40 years is that what we realized is that 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 initial model uh, is still true today. Even though the industry has changed, even though consumers and producers have changed, uh, we still have a tremendous opportunity to display and to exhibit uh, a modern agriculture farm to a large urban area. So altogether, we host about 1.4 million people every year. And uh, that makes us one of the largest agritourism sites in the United States. We're recognized by both uh, your body, um, the mayor, and you know Governor Lee as just a, an unbelievable example of what um, urban and rural can do when they join forces. So for me, as a as a as a more or less a you know a rural uh, a guy, uh, I've really loved coming to an urban area and, and working in that space uh, because it's, it's given me an opportunity to have a lot more conversations than what I could have had basically back home on my farm. Wow. And and many of us, we drive by the Agri Center daily, but we, we really don't know the specific areas of the property. Can you give our listeners kind of a bird's eye view? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, just, to, just, I guess, to background a little bit to make sure everybody understands, there's basically two nonprofits that run Shelby Farms. You have Shelby Farms Park Conservancy, which manages everything north of Walnut Grove Road, uh, more or less. And then uh, there's a couple of exceptions to that, like the BMX bike track. And then everything south of Walnut Grove Road is managed by Agri Center International. Now, we got started, like I said, in the late 70s, uh, 79 to be exact. Uh, and then we have a, a different governance. So we actually have a, a body that was created by Shelby County government called the Agri Center Commission. 
Uh, that commission helps us work with Shelby County government to make sure we're following the mission and the, uh, the initial uh, grant of use of the land to the nonprofit. Okay. And before we go to break, John, our county is massive, but how many farming families uh, are left in Shelby County? That's a great question. I'm not sure if I know that or not, but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll reach out and, and get an answer for you because I know the guy that has the answer. So Director Jim Todd of Shelby County Extension will probably know exactly how many farm families we have in Shelby County. I know the state of Tennessee, we have 68,000 farm families in the state of Tennessee, but I'm not sure just in Shelby County. Okay, now Mr. Todd is doing a very good job with Ag Extension. Uh, meeting him has been very interesting in the work they do, and y'all kind of work hand in hand. We do, and I'm sure you do like him. He's a fellow Auburn alum. War Eagle, yes. <laughs> so uh, we had to get that in there. I <laughs> yes, we did. He'd be disappointed if it I worked. did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, me being a graduate at Mississippi State University, go dogs. <laughs> I certainly under I certainly understand. So I actually had a chance to live in Alabama for a couple of years and worked very closely with. Uh, with Auburn and, and love the land grant university focus. Yeah, and we you are listening to the chairman's perspective on Kazuki and Network. John, we were just discussing the bird's eye view of the property. Could we go into more details uh, about uh, the Agri Center, some of your activities and events you host out there? Absolutely, I'm happy to talk about that. I guess first and foremost, I'd like to just acknowledge the fact that one of the really cool things about the nonprofit is that, yes, we sit on county property. Yes, we have a great relationship with Shelby County government, but we are independent. So we create our own revenue stream, and we do that by the shows and activities that the citizens of Shelby County attend. So there's a there's a fee usually associated with a lot of those shows, and we generate that revenue, and that revenue is used to run the work of the nonprofit. So our mission is to advance the knowledge and understanding of agriculture, and we have two components that play into that extremely well. One is our research side. We, we operate a commercial research organization, so we fly about 80 companies in from all around the world last year, literally about 14 different countries, came in to Memphis to do research here on our campus. Um, the other thing that we promote uh, and do an excellent job in working with uh, uh, Shelby County Extension is our education efforts. So we bring about 25,000 kids to the campus every year, of which about 10,000 run through our STEM program. So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And we embed those STEM programs around agriculture. So we make sure the children are out either in our forest or in our fields or they're walking through our demonstration garden or they're seeing something on the campus that they have, have never had a chance to see. A couple of other activities or business units that we operate within the nonprofit is Show Place Arena. That's our equestrian facility. Now, that came to us a little bit later. That wasn't a part of the original grant to use from Chevy County government. That came in the mid-'90s, and that's a 40-acre campus that does – equestrian activities it's got a large arena that's show place arena and then it has several stalls and other outbuildings barns and we're able to host um, regional and national events there uh, that contribute substantially to the success of Chevy County through economic development so total we have a 524 million dollar economic impact on on Shelby County because of the activities and events we host on the campus every year so I believe that makes us one of the you know most contributing uh, uh, impact event and activity center probably in the region uh, with an with a overall scope that not only deals with agriculture research, education, uh, equine events, and then we have a large uh, expo center. In that expo center, we'll host literally about 250 different events, everything from a shopping show. Uh, to consumer shows, to uh, uh, different types of uh, uh, public events. So we have different festivals there, indoor-outdoor events and activities. And then we also rent the space just for smaller activities as well. So any type of um, uh, lunch and learns, teaching sessions. We do a lot of um, uh, train-the-trainer type sessions there. So we sponsor a lot of other nonprofits in the space that maybe. Uh, don't have any facilities or uh, can't find a room large enough. So our, our expo and convention service uh, business, anything from five people to 5,000 people. And when, I know you have the corn maze out there, which is very popular. How many people roughly come to that every year? I know it, most people look forward to that. 
Yeah, we have a lot of outdoor events. Corn maze is one. The uh, uh, you pick strawberries is in, is in the spring. We'll run about fifty thousand people through our strawberry fields in the springtime, and then about fifty thousand to sixty thousand come through the corn maze in the fall. And then the largest event we host is we, we plant sunflowers along Germantown Parkway, and we'll have about a hundred thousand people come through that every year. Oh wow! Wow. Okay. Well, let's put a pin right here. Um, We'll be right back after the break with more Chairman's Perspective. The Chairman's Perspective on the Kazookian Network. Hey, I'm Williams Brack, co-host of Grind Set. The insight you gain from us and our guests will motivate you to take the leap into entrepreneurship. Make sure to check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast provider. Grind set on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Commissioner Amber Mills representing District 1, but sitting in today for our Chairman Mark Billingsley, the regular show host of Chairman's Perspective. And in the studio today, we have John Butler, president of AgriCenter International, visiting with us today. Now, John, you spoke earlier about the economic impact of $524 million. Uh, Most citizens of Shelby County don't realize that that you are such a huge tourist draw uh, to Shelby County. Uh, let's, Let's talk a little more about what all... Um, goes on out there and one uh, I'd like to start with the RV park most people just think if somebody has an RV they're camping but we actually have people here with uh, children in the hospital and that's kind of their space they stay in they bring their RV and um, take care of their children kind of out of there you bet so I'm I'm happy to talk about that Uh, You know, one of the cool things about the campus is that because of the activities, we're able to earn our own revenue. And basically, we operate the business of the nonprofit and then also invest about a half million dollars a year back into the improvement of the property. So it's really neat to have the chance to know that we're having a a long-term effect on the success of the campus. Now, when you look at the individuals that visit the campus, I think it's really neat to see how the nonprofit kind of leans in the different spaces. And I'll give you a, a classic example. So we've talked about Showplace Arena. We've talked about the Expo Building. We've talked about the research we run on the farm. A couple of things we haven't discussed. One is the RV Park, which you mentioned, and the other one is the Farmer's Market. Now, if we take the RV Park, you could just kind of drive by it and not really realize the service that it provides to the county. But we have um, we have thousands of people that come through there every year that are in need of short term uh, a short term stay in Memphis. Uh, about twenty percent of our overall client base at the RV park is there because either themselves or a family member is in. Um, uh, St. Jude or West Cancer Clinic or Le Bonner. And so there's a real need for what I would call, you know, short term stay in Memphis. And then if you think about it, uh, there's really not an opportunity to have, uh, because of the space that we have, an RV park there to serve those needs. We also have a lot of construction going on in downtown. We have a lot of construction teams that come in for a short duration, let's say 90 days, and they want a place to stay. And so a lot of our customers are, are, are construction workers. Again, great business. It creates a lot of revenue for the nonprofit, and it, and it adds to our sustainability. I know a lot of your listeners probably have heard a lot of the conversations that have taken place over the last co- couple of weeks about, you know, are we going to be doing a gun show or not? You know, it, it, the issue really wasn't about – who gets to make that decision? The issue was is that you know the nonprofit has al- always tried to be very sustainable and create great relationships with long term tenants. And moving forward, it was just really difficult to still do a gun show with some of the safety concerns and things like that we had around the campus. So you know I appreciate the county commission and all the work they do in helping support us. And I and I, and I think I'd like to give a shout out to Mayor Harris. He's been really supportive since he's been there as well. And we love the fact that we have the opportunity to be a good steward of a county resource. Good deal. Now, um, and I think maybe you said we discussed earlier about the acreage of it, uh, over a thousand acres. How how do you manage all of that? How many employees, and what do they do to keep it up? So first and foremost, we have a great team. Um, people that work at Agri Center are very committed to the success of the nonprofit profit and very committed to the work that we're doing. Uh, so they work very hard. Uh, rarely will you find 
uh, an employee of ours that is not 100% committed, whether it's seven days a week or six days a week or whatever it takes to get the job done. So we work very hard, and we have some great partnerships. So we we work uh, with uh, roads and bridges within county government. If we have any issues that we need county help, they're always willing to lead a hand into helping us, and that makes our job very easy. Okay, great. And you're listening to the chairman's perspective on Kazuki. And uh, what are some of the fundraisers you host for the Agri Center to help with your funding? Yeah, so when I got there, uh, one of the things that I realized that we were very sustainable, but we probably didn't do a, a great job in telling our story. And I described it as we had a little bit of a little bit of an identity crisis. So what we started doing is really trying to acknowledge how do we network with the citizens of Shelby County, with our partners, to create more value for our education team and the work of the nonprofit in in our in that space. So uh, what we wanted to do is really uh, understand our brand and then communicate our mission uh, to the citizens of Shelby County, to the philanthropic community, and to other partners. So we have a lot of corporate sponsorship. We have a lot of relationships with the philanthropic community. And and then we get a lot of support from uh, the citizens to actually conduct our mission. So again, our mission is to advance the knowledge and understanding of agriculture. And the way we do that is through our education and research team and through just really simple activities like the corn maze and the, the sunflower field and things like that. So it's really neat to have a chance. Our premier event um, is called Feast on the Farm. We host that every year. It's usually in, in June. And last year we had about 500 people attend and it was a great celebration of the work that we've done and all the proceeds go back to support our mission and support our youth education efforts. Okay, I went to that for the first time, your fundraiser, the Field to Farm, and that was very well attended and it looked like a successful event. And I know I look forward to you the next one you have um, this year. I think you have one coming up. We do. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Uh, and obviously, you, you guys have all, the county commission has always been very supportive. So that's one of the things I'd like to acknowledge is that, you know, being kind of the new guy in town, uh, I've been at the Agri Center less than four years, but. Every time I've called uh, a chairman or called the county mayor, I've got, you know, instant results and great working relationship with other departments in county government, whether it's the sheriff's department or roads and bridges or emergency management. Shelby County is really honored to have some great uh, uh, public uh, support from its its own employees. It's really uh, it's cool to have that experience. So I'd like to acknowledge all the effort from everybody from public works to, down to uh, the sheriff's department. Okay, great. Uh, next question. You had, you had mentioned partners, but we really haven't delved into it yet. Uh, you have several located on the property at Agri Center. I know Ducks Unlimited, and I know there's many others. Would you like to share with us those partners? Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to talk about the organizations that have a physical presence on the campus. Uh, one of the things we're really proud of is that, you know, Ducks Unlimited has their, their world headquarters there. Uh, we have uh, BASF um, has, a, has a facility there. It's a large uh, 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 biotech uh, research uh, greenhouse. Uh, Fiat uh, manages through their Case IH division a large training center. Uh, and then Helena Agri Enterprises has their Helena Products Division group there. And, and that's one of the, the really, I think, uh, neatest uh, organizations because of their, uh, their uh, Memphis Shelby County headquarters. So a lot of people don't realize, but they're right here in Shelby County. Their world headquarters is at Schilling Farms there in Collierville. And then their, their, their innovative product division group is, is there on our campus at Agri Center. Let's hold on right there for one minute. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Chairman's Perspective here on the Kazukia Network. Chairman's, America's own original musical art form. When did it start? Who were and are some of the major players? How do you distinguish what kind of jazz you're listening to? We talk about the great and lesser known artists, songs and tunes, the instruments and the social impact jazz has had on world culture since its beginning at the start of the 20th century. Riffin on jazz on the Kazookian Network. We are back with the Chairman's Perspective, and today we're talking with John Butler, President of AgriCenter International. And what a conversation we're having today. John, how do we engage and connect more of our youngsters 
to ag careers? Yeah, that's a great question, Commissioner Mills. Uh, that's one of the things we're focused on every day. Uh, one of the, I think, uh, gaps you'll see from urban to rural communities is that in our urban communities, a lot of our young people will think that farming is just cows and plows. Mm-hmm. We both know that it's a lot different. So it's high tech. Uh, it's it's state of the art research. It's science. It's it's engineering. It's uh, it's a really exciting to have the chance to be involved in the ag community because of the changes that we're seeing because of technology. So I can get my smartphone out and I can see if my pivots running or if my tractors are running. And so the technology is really changing the ag space. An example with that would be Indigo Ag. So Indigo has moved to Memphis roughly within the last year, and, and they've hired 700 people. None of those 700 people that are working downtown right now are, are working on a farm. Uh, all, all those folks are providing services. Uh, another example would be Helena Agri Enterprises. So they literally have thousands and thousands of employees scattered all over the United States. And again, those individuals, those men and women are not working on a farm, but they're providing services to farmers. So there's a huge opportunity for young people to be involved in the ag community by providing services to producers like myself. Uh, and, and that can be in just any any line of business. It, it could be, uh, I, I was talking earlier about a young lady that came to work for us that's an um, you know expert in IT. And uh, she never thought she would be, you know, working for an ag company. Uh, but it's very, it's very cool to have the chance uh, to interact with that space and to tell young people about all the exciting things that are happening in agriculture. Okay, and you do you you had mentioned you have a lot of uh, field trips. Do those with the students from the schools? Do that does that kind of uh, light a fire under some people? It does. Spark so interest? It does. Uh, I think that if I had one of my educators here, they would say it takes uh, basically for a child, and as a parent, I, I can I can, I can can assure this is probably the case, it takes about seven different uh, reference points for, for a young person to really understand and, and glean that information. Uh, and what I mean by that is that, uh, you know, we have to have multiple touch points with, with our young people to make sure they understand the opportunities that exist in the ag world. And so, yes, we want to get them there for field trips. We want to have them be a part of our tours. We also have a great, great summer program called Ag Tech. And we bring sophomores in from all around Shelby County. Uh, it's a limited space, about 30 students per class. But we'll operate a 1.0, a 2.0, and a 3.0 this year. So we'll have upwards of 75 young people participate this year. And that's a partnership with Shelby County government. It's a partnership with an organization called Employ. We have several other partners like Helena and H. Saga, uh, UT, TSU Extension, just a lot of great folks pulling together to give the youth of Shelby County a wonderful experience. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, let's change gears here. You have a lot of land out there. There's got to be some cute critters out there. <laughs> you have any wildlife? I know you have the fish farm and yeah. what else do you yeah, have so out there? A couple of things that we hadn't talked about yet that I'd love to mention uh, anchored around wildlife. One is a nonprofit that's on our campus and the Mid-South Raptor Center. And so any bird of prey that's injured in a four-state region can come there, be rehabilitated, and hopefully be released back in the wild where they, where they were found. Uh, the other thing we do is we have Ketchum Lake. So Ketchum Lake is a you, – you catch catfish lake, and so you, you pay to fish there, and we, we'll sell about 90,000 pounds of catfish every year out of that. So – and then a lot of people in the wintertime may notice an overwintering area. So we flood about 50 acres every winter for ducks and geese to have habitat. That's a partnership with Ducks Unlimited. Okay, and you are listening to the Chairman's Perspective on Kazukia Network. Now, you have some ex- – exciting things in store for the future you have a 40 acre research park you just yeah so um that we're calling it the innovation district we just closed our first strategic plan in 2018 within that plan it gave us the opportunity to really look toward the future and part of what we identified was building out the rest of our research park so that innovation district will be a home to to future companies um, just like we we house uh, you know Helena and Ducks Unlimited and BASF and Case IH, I want that list to grow and grow and grow. So we're already actively partnering with the Chamber of Commerce, with the state of Tennessee, to try to find uh, partners that will work in that space. One of the things we've been able to do 
over the last year and a half is that we partnered with the Tennessee Valley Authority and got an invest prep grant. And because of that partnership with Shelby County government, we were able to make an assessment of what improvements from an infrastructure standpoint were needed for that site to be to make sure like the roads, the water, the gas, electric utilities, electric utilities, everything is in place uh, to be to, to be successful for the new companies to come in there. So that's very exciting for us. It's the largest park in Tennessee dedicated to ag tech, and uh, I think it's going to be very successful. Okay, and you just purchased this when? Just so it is. It is uh, a part of our campus. It was approved uh, about ten years ago through our conservation easement to be okay. uh, to be developed. So it's always been there. We've just never actively marketed it. Okay. Well, that's exciting. That is exciting. Okay, John, it's been a joy talking to you today. Are there any parting thoughts or new initiatives you'd like to share with our listeners before we close the show and a website or a phone number our listeners can jot down? You bet. I'm happy to. First and foremost, let me just thank you for the opportunity to come here today. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's my first podcast, so this was kind of a blast. I hope well, it's mine, too. <laughs> I hope you'll have me back. Uh, I'd also like to, to thank uh, you know Chairman Billingsley for his support. To talk about AgriCenter a little bit as just a – kind of a closing wrap up i would like to make sure everybody understands that agri-center international has been around for 41 years uh we are a non-profit uh operating on county land and we're self-sustaining because of the activities and events that we host there we're able to generate enough revenue to operate our activities plus uh lean in to our mission so our mission anchored around promoting uh, agriculture industry, promoting education, research, and having a chance to bring kids to the campus to tell them, you know, not just a few, but 25,000 kids, 10,000 go through our education program, uh, to bring them uh, closer to where their food and fiber comes from is a real excitement. Our education team are dedicated professionals that love to have that opportunity uh, to teach children about agriculture, and I'm excited to see us grow in that space. Uh, we're constantly adding new team members. We're constantly uh, reaching out to, uh, you know, I think uh, expand that 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 uh, that base, and we're very excited about it. Uh, the other thing I'd like to do is mention how your listeners can can reach us. Uh, you can call us at seven five seven 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 seven, or you can check us out on the web at agricenter.org, and you can just follow the menu to click on something that uh, you're interested in. If you're in- interested in our shows ac- activities, we've got a drop down menu, show place arena. Uh, farmer's market, RV park, whatever your interest is, you can find it right there online. And then, again, i just like to say thank you. This was an awesome experience, and I appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you, John Butler. You have certainly provided a wealth of helpful information today, and we look forward to the great work you and your staff are committed to on a daily basis. So thanks so much for stopping by the Chairman's Perspective. We'll be right back with some closing thoughts. with Tanya, presented by the Commercial Appeal. 20 minutes of the challenges and opportunities, you know, we face in Memphis, but also a lot of the things nationally that, um, that, that concern me and that should concern other people as well. 20 with Tanya on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian. Certainly today, we hope the information shared with you by John Butler, president of AgriCenter International, helped you understand the commitment and work his staff puts into making sure AgriCenter International continues to be an informative and research hub for many more years to come. So I want to send a very special thank you to all of the employees of Shelby County Government. They are truly some of Shelby County's best. We've had a great show today, and we continue to encourage you to listen to the Chairman's Perspective and Commission in Action 2.0 by downloading the Kazookian app or by visiting your favorite podcast provider. Well, until next time, I am Commissioner Amber Mills sitting in for Chairman Mark Billingsley, and you've been listening to the Chairman's Perspective powered by the Kazookian Network. See you next time. The Chairman's Perspective Podcast. Executive Producer, Shelby County Commission's Chairman Mark Billingsley. Directed, produced, recorded, and distributed. Distributed by Kazookian.